This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Welcome in. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm your host, Gary Seegers, riding solo today. Chris will be back with me at the end of the week. We got two shows this week that I'll be doing by myself. We're going to talk specifically about the AP poll. Today's show, we are discussing uh, which AP top 10 team could finish the season unranked. And we're going to talk about what unranked team could end up in the top 10. And we'll explain all that as we go along the show. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. Uh, go to winningcureseverything.com. You can find everything there. All of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all of our podcasts, our YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you would so kindly, share the show out, leave some comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. We will continue on this season. We've got a lot of content that we're going to be getting into. I've got, uh, I've got an entire book, as you can see here, that we'll be discussing as we go. Uh, so, yeah, lots of college and NFL talk this week. It is week zero in college football. We're gearing up for Miami against Florida on Saturday night, and then after that game over on CBS Sports Network, Arizona at Hawaii. Only two games this week, but that's enough to hold us over. We're going to talk about our picks and previews later on in the week. Today, though, we're talking about which AP Top 10 team can finish the season unranked. The AP poll came out on Monday. This is the Top 10. Number one, Clemson. Number two, Alabama. Number three, Georgia. Number four, Oklahoma. Number five, Ohio State. Number six, LSU. Number seven, Michigan. Number eight, Florida. Number nine, Notre Dame. And number 10, Texas. Now, at least one team that began the season in the top 10 of the AP Top 25 poll finished the season unranked in 26 of the last 30 years. So if history is any indication, there's an 87% chance that at least one of these top 10 teams is going to finish outside of the top 25. They will be completely unranked by the end of the season. Last year, you had number four Wisconsin, number eight Miami, number nine Auburn that all finished outside of the top 25. So let's break this down. I have got three teams that I think could finish the season unranked. Now, I'm not certain which one will. I'll tell you which one I think has the best chance afterwards. Uh, number one, number six, LSU, has a chance to finish the season unranked. Why, you may ask? Uh, look, they are uber talented, right? But this team does lose Cole Tracy, Devin White, the all-star linebacker, and Greedy Williams, the cornerback, along with several other players, right? They lose a lot of talent. Now, they've brought a bunch in, and obviously you've got your quarterback back with Joe Burrow, but... There are still questions about Burrow. Exactly how good is he? LSU caught a lot of breaks last year. A lot of breaks. Nick Fitzgerald was not great. Uh, Mississippi State was not very good. Uh, Auburn, obviously, you had to play on the road, but they ended up not being as good as people anticipated, uh, especially with the returning quarterback, etc. Um, yeah, you, you caught Georgia sleeping. I mean, there's, there's a lot that went on with LSU last year. You got a Miami team in the opener that couldn't score against air, it felt like. Uh, there was there was a lot going on. So the schedule broke really easily for LSU last year. This year, the non-conference, not nearly as easy. You got Georgia Southern in the opener. Everybody hates that triple option. Uh, obviously, you've got plenty of time to prepare for it, but the very next week, LSU goes to Texas. After that, you've got Utah State, who is not easy. Jordan Love, a fantastic quarterback at Utah State. This is a team that won 11 games last year. Yes, they're coming into uh, into Baton Rouge, but it is the week before Florida comes to town. Could Utah State catch them sleeping? Uh, you got Florida at Mississippi State. You go you go to Starkville this year. Auburn, maybe they're improved. We'll see. And then at Alabama, at Ole Miss, who we don't think is going to be very good, but 
if that quarterback, Matt Coral, can actually play, we could see something happening there, right? Uh, and then, of course, ending the season with Texas A&M. If you end up with four, five losses there, you know, one, people will be screaming for O's head, and two, uh, you're not going to finish the season in the top 25. So that is an option there. They did it. They exceeded expectations last year. Would it surprise you at all to see them not live up to them this season? I don't think so. Next up, number seven, Michigan. Now, obviously, Chris and I love Michigan. We think we think they're going to go undefeated. I think the schedule sets up pretty well, but it is not a slam dunk thing here, right? They lose Chase Winovich. They lose Rashawn Gary, Devin Bush. The running back Higdon is gone. Uh, Jim Harbaugh looked. The last time that he went ten and two in a season was 2016. They lost the bowl game to a team from Florida, a New Year's Six bowl. This past year went ten and two in the regular season, lost a New Year's Six bowl to a team from Florida. Uh, and then the very next season, they were preseason number 11 in 2017, ended up 8-5 and five and completely out of the polls. This season, they've got Army, which is not going to be an easy one, at Wisconsin, Iowa is coming to town, at Penn State, Notre Dame, Michigan State, and Ohio State. Now, they do get a lot of those in Ann Arbor, but what happens if Josh Gaddis' offense doesn't work? What if people figure out that Don Brown's defense can be scored on and everybody learns from the Ohio State game from last year where they put up 62 points on them on a really good, like a top five defense, top three defense? A lot of things could go wrong for Michigan this year. Shea Patterson was good last year, but has he proven himself to be uh, set up where he, he can't lose, Right. I don't think he has. I don't think he's proven that he's a, a leader. I don't think he's proven necessarily anything. I could see them doing well. Obviously, we think that they're going to do well. But could things go south in a hurry here? Absolutely. You lose that second week to Army, I mean, you got a lot of trouble there. Remember, Army took Oklahoma, at, who who was much better at scoring and much better at tempo, et cetera, uh, to overtime last year. So, you know, that. that That's an an interesting situation to be in. Next up, the last one that I'm going to talk about, number eight, Florida. You know what? I take that back. We'll talk about Texas here in just a minute. But number eight, Florida, uh, they have got a ton of off-field drama that has been going on. Their recruiting class, while it came in ranked relatively highly, with all the kids that have transferred out since then, that recruiting class is actually one of the worst that they've had in the last decade. If you just look at uh, SEC numbers, right? So not great there. They are replacing four starting offensive linemen, and if Felipe Franks doesn't get protection, he is putrid. Like if Dan Mullen cannot get him to progress more, they're in a whole mess of trouble. Uh, Felipe Franks, seventy-three of one thirty-nine. That's fifty-two and a half percent. For 801 yards, four touchdowns, and four interceptions last year against uh, five top 20 defenses that they faced. So he averaged 14 out of 28. So about 50% for 160 yards with one less than a touchdown and about one interception per game that they played against top 20 defenses. They play in the SEC. They're still going to have Georgia. They're still going to have Missouri. They've got Auburn, LSU. Things could go south in a hurry for them, too. They have to play at Kentucky, who finally got the monkey off their back last year. Dan Mullen, he is not insusceptible to losing a lot of games in a season. Now, he did exceed expectations at Mississippi State, but the expectations at Florida are a whole different level. If they lose four or five games this year, I don't think it surprises too many people uh, because this team did go... 4-8 Four and eight, or four and seven, just a couple of years ago. Uh, we'll talk about Texas here really quickly. They lose a ton of experience, and they do have a very difficult schedule. LSU is coming to town. Uh, they have to play at Iowa State, at Baylor. Of course, they've got Oklahoma. Hey, could you see Texas losing four or five games? Absolutely. Now, I don't think they will. My guess for the team that has the best shot of dropping from the top ten to out would be Florida 
because there's no consistency and you cannot replace offensive linemen like Jawan Taylor, etc. Florida has the best chance to drop completely out. I don't think they will. I think this may be the first year that they've got the top 10 just about right. But I think that going forward, uh, the best chance of a team in the top 10 to be unranked at the end of the season will be Florida and Dan Mullen. All right, that's going to wrap up today's show. Again, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. You can check them out over at tunicatravel.com. Check us out at winningcureseverything.com. We will see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.